Hi folks, welcome to today's episode. In this fourth episode on the anatomy of emotions, we're going to be looking at the anatomy of shame. So if you haven't listened to the first three episodes in this series on the anatomy of joy and of anger and of gratitude, you should start there as this process will make more sense if you've gone through the first three episodes. Now, shame may seem like an odd emotion to focus on, but it can often be implicated in cases of chronic pain and shame can develop as a result of pain. So that is to say that we can feel shame uh, in our current condition. So if we're receiving a lot of care, if we're, if perhaps we feel like we're a burden on those around us, we can feel a certain amount of shame in our current condition. However, pain can also develop out of a sense of unresolved shame. So for example, this would be if you have a past experience for which you feel shame, which in turn manifests as tension and pain in the body, uh, perhaps as some form, of, some form of punishing yourself. So this would be a hypothetical case where you have done something bad and the way that you make up for that is to be in pain. The way your body punishes you for, for that is to experience pain. Now, the specifics of how or why this happens aren't really known, at least not for me. I think in the psychological world, they would talk about repressed emotions and and self, um, what is the word? Um, yes, uh, some form of um, self-sabotage. Um, that would be a common, common sort of theory in the likes of psychoanalysis. Uh, but in any case, I don't know that we really know how exactly it works, but I don't think we really need to worry too much about the mechanism of action. Uh, the goal, as always, with these meditations is to simply notice, to simply feel and to observe our internal state with the aim of better understanding ourselves. And we can get really, really bogged down in the technicalities of these things. And I imagine some people listening will want to see the studies to back up the work that we're doing. You know, they'll, they'll say, you know, we, we, need, we need a research study on this. But I think this is just a symptom of a greater problem we have in society, and that is the disconnection from ourselves and from our bodies. So it's the outsourcing of our critical thinking faculties and reliance on external authorities to tell us what is true and what isn't. And this is a huge issue that we won't get into now. <laughs> we won't get into that now. But I mention it because it feels relevant to help sort of frame the content of today's meditation. Finally, I will warn you ahead of time that we're going to be observing the sensation of shame and bringing up memories and experiences that have caused you shame in the past. So if you feel like this may be too intense for you at this time, do not proceed with this meditation. Now, of course, the entire process goes as deep as you choose. So you remain entirely in control but in any case, I encourage you to use your own judgment with this. Anyway, let's begin with this meditation. I want you to take a few moments to find a comfortable position lying down if possible, though you can sit too if you prefer. Now, as you settle into this position, I want you to close your eyes and focus on your breathing. So slowly inhale through your nose and exhale through your nose. If possible, keep your lips sealed, your jaw relaxed, your tongue to the roof of your mouth and your throat unobstructed. You can do this by keeping your eyes focused on the horizon. So keep your eyes closed, but your eyes pointing towards the horizon. In through your nose and out through your nose. As you continue to settle into your breathing, focus on elongating your breath. Make it as slow and silent as possible. The more you slow down and control your breathing, the more your body will relax.
Now I want you to focus on making the inhalation and exhalation as smooth as possible. Notice any stuttering or fluctuating or uneven flow of air as you inhale and exhale and try to make it smoother. Inhale evenly and slowly and exhale evenly and slowly. Find that point where you're experiencing mild air hunger, but you're still able to recover comfortably with each cycle of your breath. So get comfortable and familiar with a slight shortage of air. This actually makes your body resilient to stress because your body actually has plenty of oxygen. It's just not used to elevated levels of carbon dioxide. As you build your tolerance to this, and as your nervous system shifts into a state of healing, a feeling of warmth will wash over your body. Continue to breathe, continue to let go, and continue to relax. Now that you've slowed your breathing, I want you to shift your focus towards your body. Scan for any unnecessary tension. See if you can let go and simply release into the support of the ground. Remind yourself that your bones and your body are supported and know that your body can let go and fully relax. And I'd encourage you to give everything permission to relax because you control what your body is doing. As you continue to breathe and to feel supported, I want you to draw your attention to a part of your body of your choice. So somewhere that you're immediately drawn to. As we're into our fourth meditation, notice if your ability to tune into yourself is improving. So as you settle into yourself, is it easier to perceive your internal environment? Are your body's constant but subtle signals becoming more apparent to you? As always, our goal is to cultivate this inner awareness, to simply notice. Then we simply trust in the body's own wisdom and its self-healing mechanisms to act upon the new information. So these meditations are simply an opportunity to gather information. Continue to breathe and focus on the part of your body that you're initially drawn to. Begin to tune into the rhythm of that part of the body. Feel the life of those tissues. Feel the pulse. Feel the blood flowing through the area. Feel the bones and feel the joints floating in the soft tissue. See if you can notice their gentle oscillation and their rhythm as they're influenced by the motion of their surroundings. Continue to breathe and simply observe these sensations. If necessary, remind yourself not to strain or to force anything. Simply observe, simply notice. Continue to breathe. Now I'd like you to think of a time when you felt a strong sense of shame. 
perhaps a time when you acted or behaved in a way that you're not proud of. Take a few moments to see what comes up for you. Continue to breathe and observe the thoughts that come to mind. As you bring up the feeling of shame, are you drawn to a specific part of your body? Do the thoughts reside solely in your head or are they housed in your physical body? And if so, where? Sit with these questions and see what bubbles up to the surface. As you experience the feeling of shame, is it familiar? Is there a connection becoming clear between this feeling and the pain you've been feeling? Can you feel a connection between the two? If you feel no connection, that's okay. There's no right or wrong thing to feel. It's just an opportunity for more awareness. So continue to breathe and continue to sit with these feelings. Now I'd like you to shift your focus towards having compassion for yourself. If you felt shame for something you did in the past, forgive yourself now. If that shame is felt somewhere specific, see if you can let it go. See if you can let that feeling dissolve. It's no longer needed. Give your body permission to move on. It can help to think of that internalized emotion like a ball or stream of energy. It's sort of distinct from the rhythm of the surrounding tissues. So see if you can notice this, if it is even present. Perhaps it feels agitated and overactive. Perhaps it sort of feels dull and lifeless. Simply notice what it feels like and try to direct your mind and your body to let go of it. Allow your body to express this release and this letting go in whatever way feels natural. Your breathing may deepen or change. You may move, you may stretch and twist. You may feel a gentle tremor or shaking in the body. This may be in one specific area or it may may be spread throughout the body. Simply allow whatever is happening to happen. Continue to breathe in through the nose and out through the nose. If you've forgotten, remember to keep your lips sealed, your jaw relaxed and your tongue to the roof of your mouth. Realize that whatever it is that you feel shame for is in the past. The only power it retains is the power that you grant it. Inhale through your nose and exhale through your nose.
when you feel ready, you can begin to shift your focus towards a feeling of resilience. Just like in the first meditation, I want you to think of a time and place where you felt your best. Bring that time and that place to life for all five senses. See it, feel it, touch it, taste it, whatever it is, bring it to life as vividly as possible. Let that feeling of resilience and joy wash over your body. You can think of it washing away or cleansing any residual feelings of shame. Remind yourself to let go into the support of the ground. If your body has tensed up in any way, allow that to let go again as you sink into the support of the ground. Continue to breathe and sit in this full body feeling of resilience and joy. As we come to the end of this meditation, you can continue to keep your eyes closed as I share some final thoughts. This meditation has been largely about creating awareness. So while some of the feelings of shame may have been overcome and maybe your body has processed them and move on on some level, it's likely that this process will require more work. So I've included a series of writing exercises in the resources section of this podcast to help guide you along the way. More than anything, I wanted to shine a light on any direct connections between your experience of pain and any unresolved feelings of shame. Hopefully this process has offered you some food for thought and some new information to consider in your healing journey. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, don't hesitate to reach out. And I'd also recommend taking some time to document your experience, particularly if you felt strong emotions and bodily connections. Anyway, that's it for this episode. I hope you found it helpful. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Physical Education Podcast. If you're the kind of person who likes to help others, then share this with someone in need. If you found value in the information here, they will too. So please share this in whatever way you can. If you have any questions, you can email me directly at pa at thebackpaincoach.net. I may even use your question for a future podcast episode. If you'd like more information to help you overcome pain, be sure to follow The Back Pain Coach on Instagram, Facebook and YouTube and to join my newsletter. The major turning points in my own recovery have come from changes in perception and through learning more about myself. I believe that we can help others by sharing information that expands their minds. Finally, I'd greatly appreciate if you could leave a positive review on iTunes or Stitcher so that others may find this information and you can play a positive role in their healing journey. Thanks again for listening.